Proxar filters, and a night in New York City. What could go wrong? Me. Hello, it's me. I'm Steven Allen. How are you doing today? Hit the subscribe button if you like using filters and let me know if you like using the IRL ones or the ones in an app. So these are Proxar filters. I do have more videos on these Proxar filters talking more about them, but basically they are just a way for you to get your camera a little bit closer to your subject because with this camera I can only get about three feet away and that's as close as I can get and then if I get any closer it's just a blurry mess. Do you begin to see now how a date with your family can be a truly special occasion? So this lets me get up and closer to the subject. I like these little things. So I went out the other day and I tried out these Proxar filters while shooting some other videos. And um, I got a few different shots that I think are pretty cool with this because I was shooting through some windows, like storefronts, because it was so dark, it was so late at night, I had to kind of use the light that was around. So we got to see how this glass performed with this glass and with some other glass. So now what I would like to do is pull out my Proxar filters and throw those on my Hasselblad and try to take some really close up photos. And I think I wanna to try to take some photos of this. If there's enough light here, take a close up of that. And then I also would like to take a close up of some of this stuff. I don't know how it's gonna work with the glass, but we'll try, because there's some good light in here. We'll try. They worked out, they did their thing thing. I shot at an ISO 400. I did a couple with ISO 800, but then I was just remembering that I read online and heard that the ISO 800 with this digital back is just awful. So I stuck to 400. I haven't ever really played with 200 or 100 because I've just never really had that much light to deal with. I'm kind of a 400 person even with film. I think possibly I need to have this camera CLA'd just so that this digital back works a bit better with this. I think like with the close focusing and having such a wide aperture, it means that my focus has to be like really on the money and maybe I need to have this adjusted a little bit for that. But otherwise, I think it was really good, especially at night, because I thought it would just be a, uh, a flop. So I finished taking the photos with my Proxar filters and actually took a few extra photos with um, without the Proxar filters just because I thought the composition was interesting. But uh, beyond that, I think that was uh, pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to play around with this camera. I don't want to walk down this. What is that? It's a narrow little alley. It's a scary movie. Can I walk on the street? I guess not. I don't want to walk down there. I think I'm gonna, gonna walk this way. Turn around, cross the street, walk up, because that's when people do play games. Those little crevices. And in New Yorker knows you want to avoid the crevices, because that's where people do stuff. <laughs> I do have other videos on the Chanel about the Hasselblad 500CM and this Phase 1 P20 digital bag. So check it out. It's in the card. It's in the description. Enjoy watching with your eyes, listening with your ears, your ears. So check it out. You should not only subscribe to this Chanel, but also you should subscribe to my other Chanel because I have many videos on both Chanel's. So subscribe, be a subscriber, subscribe to both. Subscribe over there, subscribe over here. On this Chanel, we're talking about cameras, we're talking about my music, we're talking about other things on the other Chanel, we're talking about game shows, we're talking about Netflix, we're talking about other things. So check it out. And I also do short videos as well. YouTube shorts, like TikTok, follow me on TikTok, please. And thank you, you're the goat. It's good. 
it's nice. I want to try this out a bit more and maybe play around with getting some photos of um, like texture or like getting really up close to a tree to see the bark or to a building to see the bricks. And this was not really difficult to manage because I removed this. You don't have to do that to put these on, but it just makes it a bit easier. But just taking them off and I have a pretty good judge of like, okay, so I wanna get really close. When I was shooting through those storefront glass windows, I couldn't get really close to the subject because you know, the glass is thick and then the subject is behind the glass and it's maybe like a foot away. Fruit by the foot. So I couldn't use all three of these together. I was using like the 2M and sometimes the 1M and I just, you know, screwed it on and then I could easily like hold on to the other filters as I took the shot. And after I'm done, put this back on. I think if I used an extension tube, which is another way you can get a close focus, that would be too much. Cause then you'd have to take the lens off, put that on, put this on, put that on, you know, it's too much. This was nice, easy, done. Check out my music. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Bye. Play, stream, hear it now. Grabbing the focus was a little tedious with this because you're so close up. I was shooting at f2.8 and I was shooting at a shutter speed of one over 60 because I was trying to get as much light in the camera as possible. So I was trying not to shake. I was trying to get the focus. You can't really review the images here. You can see if you got an image, you can kind of see the composition. Let father and mother guide the conversational trend if they desire. But this is kind of the resolution of a cell phone from 2004. So you really can't see if you grabbed your focus or not. When I first got this digital bag and I took a photo with it and I saw the image back here, I was like, oh no, it's broken. But it's just because it's a really low resolution. It's so wild that like the resolution was that low. And I feel like I have a cell phone from 2004. I just have like an old cell phone because I like vintage things. And the resolution of the pictures isn't that low on the screen. So I don't know what's going on with that, but anyway. It was a little tedious. I did my best. I feel like some things were in focus that I didn't want to be in focus. It wasn't like the thing was just all out of focus. It was maybe like, let's say this was the subject. A book and a lens cap in this book was just a little bit closer to you, me, than this. And I was focusing on this. This might have ended up being in focus and this wasn't. Or like, this part of the book, if I had it angled like a little bit like this, this part of the book was in focus, this part wasn't. I noticed that the focus was a little bit off, but you know, that's what you get when you're playing around with these different things and using old cameras, you know? But it was fun, I enjoyed it. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you wanna see more photos taken with these filters, cause I can go out, I can do that. I can set some stuff up in my apartment and do more with that because that would be, you know, a more controlled environment. But I think it's fun going out and trying to take some photos too, you know? And I think trying this out during the daytime would make this whole experience easier because then I could use different settings. I'm not locked into like the slowest shutter speed that I can do while maintaining, you know, the camera shake and the handshake and everything. And then getting locked into that really wide aperture. What if these filters could be like Snapchat filters or Instagram filters or TikTok filters? Like you could buy an IRL filter and it'll put like dog ears on you. Wouldn't that be wild? Like a boop. What? These are just very nifty. I need to keep them clean. I feel like it has just a little bit of dust. So it's another thing that you have to keep clean. The bigger issue is like the sensor. If the sensor was dirty, then that's when you see issues. But often I find that you see more of that stuff with the really closed apertures like F22. That's when you see like your dirty sensor issue. And I had issues with that with this A7S II because I was shooting at F16, F11, and I was just seeing those dark little hairs and marks 
all over the footage and I was like, what is this? And I was cleaning the lens and I was like, what's going on? And it was a sensor. And it's kind of scary to clean a sensor, but you can do it. I like that they can stack. Hasselblad did their thing with this, made it a nice little package. Boom, boom. What was the last filter you used? The plan is to post at these times on this channel. Three times a week, Monday and Thursday and Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And at these times on my other channel. Two times a week, Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see. Again, we'll see. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up and do something to the bell. Tab it. So you can turn on those post notifications so you get notified whenever I post a new video. Visit my website, Perlin.com, where you can see my art, my music, my store, my blog, my merch, my clothing, and all of that good stuff and more. And until next time, take a little time to make art and be brilliant. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. You're the goat. It is so warm in this room. Why is it so warm in this room?